my name is Addie Ford and I am with Barnes Rover Distillery in Rockford, Illinois. And we want to welcome you to our live Thirsty Thursday event. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, this is number four uh, in the event. And, <laughs> and Tim is working behind the scenes. Uh, to ensure that anybody that joins us, he can wave at you, he can send you messages uh, while I'm up here and answer any questions or field them this way. So if you are joining us, uh, if you're coming back, uh, welcome back. We are so glad to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. We do appreciate it. Uh, so today we are going to be making an RFD Bloody Mary and pairing it with a charcuterie board, uh, which I have behind me. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the charcuterie board. Uh, so talking points, we're going to talk about vodka. Uh, I know that we talked about it last week, but we'll hit on it again because we have a flavored vodka to introduce. And we'll talk about tomato juice. Uh, building a charcuterie board uh, and making and uh, definitely tasting uh, a Bloody Mary. So, a little bit of history on Bloody Marys. Um, it's been around forever, um, but uh, the, the last documented or the first documented that I could find was in 1921. Um, it was created by a French bartender in Paris that worked at the New Yorker bar in 1921. So his recipe was super simple. It was one part vodka, one part uh, tomato juice. So, and one part means equal parts or one, like one ounce vodka, one ounce tomato juice. So equal parts, one to one. Um, but now, you know, a hundred years later, it's been a hundred years, a hundred years later, uh, the, <laughs> the Bloody Mary has definitely evolved, it's gotten fancier, um, and a lot more is added to our Bloody Marys these days uh, than, we, uh, than what we would have had 100 years ago. So, I love progress. So, <laughs> uh, so let's talk about, so, two basic, two basic ingredients, um, obviously the vodka, and you're really going to want to stick to a premium vodka, our RFD vodka and a tomato juice, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So, uh, vodka. We talked last week about our vodka, the RFD vodka. I'm just gonna reiterate for those that are joining for the first time. Um, it is a traditional vodka, odorless, colorless, and tasteless. That's what I mean by traditional. Um, and it is 100% corn, which makes it gluten-free, and we do not add any additional sugars. And the reason why I say that is because it has a super silky smooth mouthfeel and a super clean finish. So in our opinion, I think it's the best vodka out there in the market. Um, so, and priced reasonably, so that you, can, um, that you can have it on the back of your shelf uh, at your bar. Um, and make beautiful cocktails with it. So uh, I want to introduce our RFD cucumber flavored vodka. Now this one is super unique um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we start with the RFD vodka base. So you've got that beautiful silky smooth mouthfeel with a clean finish, but we've added real cucumbers. Now, when you say real cucumbers, what do you mean, Hattie? So what I mean is, uh, for most of you that don't know, we actually have a huge greenhouse uh, on the property. We make a ton of uh, flavors. We do canning, we do jams, we do jellies here. Um, but uh, we have introduced our farm series. So we last year we grew uh, cucumbers in our high tunnel. Um, we picked them every day. They went through um, a vacuum still, so real cucumbers. Uh, we grow here, right here in Rockford on our property, uh, which when we open, you'll be able to see. And, uh, and then we go ahead and cold distill them to give it a beautiful cucumber aroma. Um, and it has a fresh, clean, crisp cucumber taste. Um, and if I were to have to uh, color it, I would color it green. 
uh, because cucumbers are green, it's bright, it's beautiful, and it goes really well with Bloody Marys. Okay, so these are the two that we're gonna use today, and we're actually gonna use both of these in our Bloody Marys when, when we get to it. Um, but I wanna talk just a little bit about um, your tomato juice, your mixer, um, you can use V8, you can, I mean, there's a mecca of mixers that you can use. Choose your favorite, um, but we have actually, I'm gonna set these aside. There's gonna be a lot of moving parts um, here, simply because we've got, a, we've got a lot to show you, and I don't have a lot of room to show you, so we'll just keep moving things around. Um, I wanna talk about uh, Jack Links. So when I think about a Bloody Mary, I automatically think I'm gonna put some meat. I'm gonna add a meat, a meat stick, um, a bacon. Um, so Jack Links is, in my opinion, is a great mix for our, for our vodkas. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the three that we have in front of us. Um, we have the Signature, oh, Signature is my middle, Signature. Um, the Signature is a pepper, it's got some light brine, and, and for those of you that don't know the term brine, brine just means salt water. Um, and when I think about like cooking a turkey in brine, it, it does amazing things to meat. Uh, so, the signature is uh, pepper, light brine, a, and a subtle hint of steak sauce. So if you like steak sauce, if you like Worcestershire sauce, um, but you don't have it, the signature is a great, uh, is a great addition to your Bloody Mary mix. Um, the second one is dill. This one I think is newer on the market, uh, and it allows that pickled brine. Uh, spicy, it's got a little bit of horseradish, uh, and um, pepper, pepper finish. Um, and lastly, if you like something that's a little bit hotter, um, the sweet and hot is really interesting. So signature, little tangy, um, a little tart, like it's got a zing, it's got a zing to it. And then it finishes with a beautiful, like I just ate a steak. Uh, the dill pickle, obviously that dill comes through, but it does, and with the horseradish added, it does, it's mild. So you wouldn't, you would think with the horseradish it would come through, but it really doesn't. It just gives a really great um, smooth finish. And this is if you're not adding anything to it. So if you want to keep your Bloody Mary bar super simple for Super Bowl um, or a party that you're throwing, grab three different mixes grab two different vodkas, and let everybody decide what they want. Um, and your sweet and hot, a little bit of honey, um, combined with peppers, spices, and this one finishes with horseradish, and it definitely finishes with pepper and horseradish. <laughs> so uh, today we're actually gonna use the signature um, simply because I like the finish that it has. I like that steak sauce. But I wanted to give you three different options, um, and three very different mixes. So we'll put those aside. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is garnishes. So the thing that I love about a Bloody Mary bar is that it serves multiple purposes, um, and which is where our charcuterie bar, or our charcuterie board comes in. Now don't, don't think that it has to be beautiful and fancy and all that other good stuff. Um, it can be really simple, and if you don't have a charcuterie board, which is really just a, a wood board, um, you can use a pan. Uh, just make sure that you line it with some parchment paper uh, so, um, so that all of the juices don't kind of sit in the pan for the day. Um, so for your Bloody Mary uh, person who's coming to make a Bloody Mary, it's a great addition to any of the garnishments. Um, or those that are drinking beer at Super Bowl, um, they can raise at the Bloody Mary bar. So <laughs> it's like a win-win. Uh, so I'm gonna move this very gingerly and gently. We're just gonna slide it over. So here is our charcuterie board. Um, the three things that you should probably keep in mind when you're building your charcuterie board is um, variety, taste, and texture. Um, so when I say that, and for my artistic 
friends out there, color, 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 color. Keep in mind color. We drink and eat with our eyes uh, first. So anything that looks appealing and that's bright and fun uh, definitely makes for uh, a really good board that people want that are attracted to and want to eat from. So like I said, variety, taste, and texture. Not in that order. I think I said, yeah, variety, taste, and texture and color being the bonus. So you're looking for sweet, salty, crunchy, fatty. Uh, fatty is your che your, are your cheeses and your meats. Uh, savory, pickled, brined, and I love fresh. So I do love a pickled, uh, which is uh, we've used, um, uh, oh my gosh, not habaneros, these are pepperoncinis. So we used pepperoncinis, uh, we've used dill pickle, um, we've used uh, olives with blue cheese in them, um, kind of different. I know that they have olives that are stuffed with jalapeno and garlic, so that's another thing if you just wanted to do a few olives. Uh, and then we did obviously uh, your traditional uh, olive. We did cheeses. Now, for all you moms out there, that don't want to take the time to cut up your cheese because you don't have time um, or you know you're single and you don't have time because you're out having fun um, i love these individual packs first of all they look great in a bloody mary and you can save them for later so everybody can pick up a pack they can peel their own cheese uh, i have chosen uh, a chipotle uh, a mozzarella because mozzarella goes well with tomato and a pepper jack because you have to have a pepper jack for those that like you know things a little bit hotter and spicier um, again it's about variety and I added uh, just a little bit of Guinness cheddar um, we were talking with some people last night and they use Guinness in their Bloody Mary and I thought it was like a that sounds really good along with vodka of course um, but we chose a Guinness cheddar to put in and accompany your Bloody Mary. Um, obviously, you can't have a Bloody Mary bar without celery. Um, I like some onion stalks. And when you're building, um, start with the things that are in bowls or dishes or glassware. You guys, use what's in your cupboard. You don't have to go out. You don't have to buy anything that's fancy. Use what's in your cupboard. Mix it up. Nothing has to match. Um, which is what I love. Um, and you're wondering, where is the sweet on my on my bar? The sweet is in our peppers. So we did an orange pepper. I did buy a yellow pepper, but I couldn't, I didn't have room on it on my board. So, and for my salty, uh, we picked up this amazing, uh, I don't need, what is it called, Tim? Uh, it's called something. I'll get it for you. We'll post it for you. Um, but it shaves really, really well. It is, it's like beef jerky, um, but it's so much better. It's like meat on crack. It's so good. Um, and I really like that with a Bloody Mary as well, because it's got that, that jerkiness to it, but it is an elevated jerky. I mean, it's like homegrown. Anyways, I'm getting off on jerky. So uh, anyways, so. Any questions about building a charcuterie bar or a charcuterie board? Any questions, Tim, about? No. Anything, okay, no. So I'm gonna put this aside because we're gonna build uh, our cocktail. So let's make a cocktail. And I'm actually gonna slide this over um, just because it's big and bulky and I need the room. But we'll put it back here for all you lovely people to see. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to add to your charcuterie board is, again, I like to slide things forward that's already done, is you want to add your spices. Um, so in this case, we did a celery seed, celery salt. Um, I did a smoked hickory salt. Now this one, it's pretty powerful and a little bit goes a really, really long way. So you don't have to use a whole lot along with coffee rub. So if any of you have been following us for a period of time, you will know that back in September, we posted our Bloody Mary 
um, cocktail, and we also we also uh, posted our Bloody Mary recipe, so our Bloody Mary juice recipe. Um, so I think it's like September, late September in the 20s, September 27th, September 29th, something like that is when we posted. So you can go back on Facebook or Instagram and actually look for our recipe if you wanted to make your own Bloody Mary mix. Um, our secret uh, to a good tomato base for Bloody Mary is um, beets. Uh, and then we add a little bit of coffee rub. So we add a little bit of coffee rub. Um, that it's, it's difficult to find, but I know you can get it on Amazon. And then you have to have some Worcestershire for all of your meat lovers. And then I would do some kind of brine. Um, in this case, I've left a couple of olives in there so people knew that it was olive juice. Um, if I was doing a pickle brine or a pickle juice, I would leave a pickle in there. And, and that way you just don't have to, um, you don't have to uh, label anything. So it's pretty self-explanatory when there's a pickle in there or an olive in there. And then of course, don't forget your Tabasco sauces. Um, you can do the regular Tabasco sauce. Now, Tim loves Tabasco sauce, so we always have a mecca of Tabasco sauce in the house. Um, and we also make our own Tabasco sauce, which I wouldn't recommend. It's, it's bad. So, it, it's hot. Oh, it's super good, but <laughs> the whole house is hot like Tabasco sauce. So... <laughs> Anyway, so you're going to want to add this next to your charcuterie board. Um, and then for all of my carb lovers, uh, I picked this up at Valley's last night. And these are peanut butter, peanut butter infused peanut butter. There's peanut butter inside of these pretzels, which I think, ooh, that, that works really well with Bloody Mary too. So you can go ahead and lay out a few crackers, a few pretzels, and again, those are for your grazers for the Super Bowl, or those are for um, people who just wanna grab one or two. They've got some salt on them, so it's a really great um, addition. All right, we'll move our board back, and let's build a cocktail. So <laughs> uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is rim our cocktail, uh, but this is not something that you have to do. Uh, but give people an opportunity if they want to. Um, I, peel, I slice a couple of lemons and oranges because, again, glassware goes a long way for me, at least. Um, I like to use a highball, um, but if you don't have really tall glasses, just a rocks glass will work as well, as long as you've got a pretty thick um uh, mouth on it um, so that people can put in their garnishments so that's kind of the goal is to have enough room for your garnishments so we will go ahead I'm gonna use this one this glass just because it's easy and you can actually see everything that's happening and I like to rim my glass with a slice of lime so we'll start with rimming it so I do cut um, and after I do that, I'm going to throw my lime in. Why not? Oh, wait. I'm going to rim it first and then throw my lime in. <laughs> so the, uh, the spice that I have here is um, celery seed, celery salt. I've added a little bit of coffee rub and a dash. And when I say dash, I mean like a pinch of... Um, smoked hickory and and simply because not everybody likes something smoky so we'll go ahead and rim this beautiful glass hope I got enough lime juice on there we'll just kind of rim it around then we'll put that aside now I'll squeeze my lemon or my lime my lime and I do both because um, some people like lemon some people like lime and then we go ahead and we'll add ice. And go ahead and fill this up to the rim. Um, make sure that you've got plenty of ice for your bar. Um, I like to keep a decanter 
uh, but a bucket of ice works as well. Just make sure that you've got something that people can get, get it out and not their hands. So, so now that we've got ice in there, now it's time to build our cocktail. Um, we talked about our RFD vodka. So I like to put one ounce of RFD vodka in, and I like to put one ounce of RFD cucumber in. So I learned something new uh, the other day, and if you count to four, that's one ounce. So we'll do that together. One, two, three, four. Aww. And cucumber, one, two, three, four. I do love that smell. It is so good. And in a Bloody Mary, I mean, it's delicious. It is absolutely delicious. So you've got kind of half of your glasses filled. Now this is a time that you can either, you can do one of two things. You can either put your spices in here or you can add your tomato uh, mix. <clears throat> I'm gonna actually add my spices first um, simply because it just allows me to stir it a lot better. So I like uh, a little bit of celery seed. I like a dash of celery seed in mine. First of all, I just love celery seed. It's got a great flavor. Um, I do coke and I do coffee rub. Um, and again, I do just a dash, uh, just a dash. But make sure because ooh, there's no um, there's no filter. So we're gonna use our palm to make sure that we don't overdo it because I still want to taste the cucumber and I want to taste the mix. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not sure that I said this, but the reason why we're using uh, one part to one part of our vodkas is that I love our cucumber vodka. It is, I mean, it tastes just like a cucumber. So I want it to be present in my cocktail. Um, and you can do two, you can do two ounces, um, that's no problem. But I want to taste everything else and I want it to be a really good blend. So that's why I use one in one. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to splash some Worcestershire in here. Even though I'm using the, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the um, signature blend. Uh, I still want a splash of Worcestershire. So I kind of dash it up. Uh, again. Let your, let your company, let your party do what they want. I mean, that's kind of the fun. It's like you prepare it and you get to walk away and let them make their own cocktail. I mean, what a better host than to, <laughs> to have your guests as their own bartender. <laughs> that works. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill our glass with the signature Jack Links. And I don't want to... I don't want to fill it all the way. I want to leave a little bit of room because I am going to put a few things in there. So when you're building your charcuterie board, make sure that you have plenty of um, plenty of things for them to pick things up, put them in their uh, in their glass so that it's easy to retrieve later. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will grab a straw. I'll just stir with a straw. I mean, why, why use another utensil that you have to clean? So stir with a straw. So now we're properly, properly stirred. We've got that, we've got the vodka out of the bottom. I should probably learn to stir better. I'll work on that, you guys. And it's back to the charcuterie board. So this is where your guests can go bananas. Um, the other thing that I would probably do, leave out a few small plates in case someone just wants to enjoy their Bloody Mary <clears throat> the way that it is, but they don't mind picking while, they, while they're drinking. They don't want to necessarily go in and grab. So before I add some garnishments, um, we're gonna go ahead and taste. So again, tasting is always with your nose first. In this case, it's with your eyes because it led me over here, it was so pretty. Um, I get a really, really strong steak sauce. Worcestershire comes through, but it's bright. Um, and we'll go ahead and taste. 
and I'm gonna taste with my salt rim. Mm. Oh my goodness, that is a great Bloody Mary. It's got just, um, it's got a beautiful tomato base. That cucumber comes through. Mm. I have to take a sip. That cucumber really, really comes through. So it makes it really bright. I added cucumbers to my board so that I could eat a cucumber, take a sip, eat a cucumber, take a sip, and I get, it's like a cucumber. Um, this is such a great mix. It's so traditional. It's so classic. Um, and it really works uh, during party time. It works for Super Bowl. And RFD Vodka, I think, makes the drink. That's in my opinion. So, any questions? Any nope. questions? Okay. So, uh, now that we've made our RFD Bloody Mary, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to garnish with a few things. Um, I've laid out some pepperoncini. I've laid out some beef sticks. Um, I like to mix it up and put beef, pork, and uh, turkey. So these are my turkey sticks. Turkey sticks. Uh, of course, I have to have a couple of cheese. Uh, Guinness cheese sticks. And we'll add, oh, look at me. I'm just going to pick up with my fingers. Don't do this. And then I want it to be a little bit, a little bit fresh. And, I mean, you can't have a good Bloody Mary without a celery stalk, right? Oh, I probably should have started with that. And Izzy's talking to us. <laughs> she wants to make sure that she's heard. And I'm grabbing, actually, another cucumber. So, this is our RFD uh, Bloody Mary. We hope that you have enjoyed uh, our time, we've enjoyed our time with you. Um, if you like uh, what you have, uh, what you have seen today, you want to make more cocktails um, and learn more about making cocktails with RFD vodka or RFD cucumber vodka um, or any of our other Barnstormer uh, products. And don't forget for Super Bowl, you probably have bourbon drinkers. Uh, don't forget our 40 Winks Whiskey 90 Proof and 40 Winks Whiskey Barrel Proof. Um, 90 Proof makes a good mixer, uh, but Barrel Proof is a good sipper on the rocks. It's perfect for Super Bowl. Uh, so uh, continue to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And if you like what you see, um, please share this video and uh, go ahead and like the video. And if you're on Instagram, you can go ahead and save using that little teeny uh, ribbon uh, down in the bottom corner. So uh, by, and by clicking in our bio, so, and by clicking in our bio uh, or our about page, uh, you can actually see what retailers carry us um, so that you can pick it up before Sunday. And uh, if there's no other comments, because I can't, it's I, the, the, oh, thank but, you. I see the hearts. Thank you. The only question was, uh, do you start with a full glass of ice? You know what? I do. Um, you don't have to, really. I mean, anything kind of goes, but I like to, I like to start with a full glass, um, simply because it will make your cocktails go a little bit longer. People will, will want to come back for a second. Um, and I like something that's cold. I'm going to sip on this, you know, because it's brunch time. So, <laughs> so I'm going to have a Bloody Mary for brunch and lunch. So, <laughs> um, anyways, we are delighted that you have come. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we love that you guys um, share our content, uh, that you like our content. <laughs> Uh, and we will continue to make Thirsty Thursday cocktails as long as you guys join us and as long as you guys uh, share and like us. So thank you so much for the hearts. I can see that from this far away. Um, we hope that you have a beautiful weekend. Uh, for all of you guys that are our friends and family that are in Florida, go Buccaneers. <laughs> and uh, 
questions and uh, have a great Super Bowl. We hope that you have a beautiful gathering. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay warm if you're in the Rockford area or in the Midwest. So it's supposed to get super, super bitter and cold. And we just love that you guys uh, have come and joined us. Let us know if there's anything that we can help you through or help you uh, create your board. Uh, we'll go ahead and post this and, and then we'll post it to Facebook and we'll post it to a YouTube as well. So until we see you again, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, a great Super Bowl, and enjoy the spirit of Rockford. Thanks guys, stay warm.